Let's look at injuries across the NBA. All 30, 30 teams, 30 teams, that's how you say it. All 30 teams, all updates, it's all coming up. Michael Bolton? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and this is called What? I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. If you are here, you're double banging it, aren't you? You're double banging. You're a double banger. DB Legend, DB Crew. We're all here. If we watch a video, we listen on audio. We do both. You bump up those numbers. They're rookie numbers. Get them up there. All right. Um, thank you again for being here. So let's uh, let's do injuries. We are recording this after the first Christmas Day game uh, has finished. And it's obviously going to be shows pumping through the day and then a recap show coming later tonight. Hope you're all enjoying your Christmas and uh, you're awake and watching this. And make, make the family watch it. Now that you're in a great spot here, actually, you've got all your family around most likely for Christmas Get their phones, sign into the YouTube accounts, go and find Locked On Fantasy Basketball, subscribe, thumbs up, and watch it. Just have it stream all through the day while they don't even know. And you can even find their Spotify and whatever and subscribe over there, their Apple Podcasts and leave reviews, all that stuff. Let's just have a game. Everyone's phone's in the middle, open up your YouTubes, we're going to play a game. Sounds like a new Christmas tradition in, in my mind. All right, we are here to look at injuries, like I said. Always these injury updates are often nebulous. They are ever shifting because teams are ever shifty. They don't tell us exactly what happens. And I try to guess, I try to project injured dates and when players return. So let's talk about it. Let's go to Washington first. Dolan Wright, we we haven't got an update. This is basically the initial time frame that was given. We're here and we passed it a week ago. So I, I don't know. I haven't heard about when he's coming back. Often players will just go, hey, here I am, surprise. And that might happen for DeLon. Um, Johnny Davis, similarly with his calf. I'm going to put them out for a couple more games. Honestly, Davis isn't going to matter. Although, if your league is stupid and plays in April, Johnny Davis will matter in April. I'm very confident Johnny Davis will matter in April. So just be aware of that. DeLon, I don't think is going to impact anyone too much. Uh, Kyle Kuzma, as much as DeLon's a great player, I just don't think he's going to be doing enough regularly enough to matter for most leagues. He might prove me wrong. Kyle Kuzma is dealing with a knee problem. He is probable. The big injuries in Utah are two that we don't know about. You're going to hear that phrase often, uh, uttered often. Um, I don't know whether Keontae George and Taylor Horton Tucker are going to play in their next game. And it's important because if they're both out, we stream Chris Dunn like shit, like he is all the way through. He runs all the way through us like off seafood. That is how much we have to stream with Chris Dunn, but we don't know. Chris Dunn could play 30 minutes and go 11, 7, and 12 with two steals and two blocks, or he could play zero minutes. That is the rub, isn't it? It doesn't appear like Horton Tucker's is a serious issue. George, it looked maybe serious and they downplayed it, but we haven't heard anything. They're both, I've got at the moment, questionable. I would say George is probably more on the QD side, questionable to doubtful, and I'd say Horton Tucker's more on the PQ side, probable to questionable. But... I don't know. If George is out, we stream Horton Tucker. If George and Horton Tucker are out, we stream Dunn. Really, really simple equation, I think, with those guys. Toronto Raptors, the never-ending illness that is Christian Coloco. Someone said that it was mentioned he had long COVID. Okay, I, I hadn't seen that. Uh, if so, bloody hell, that is, that's long, and I'm not downplaying long COVID at all, because honestly, since I had COVID, I, I, I feel way shitter, and I, I, maybe that's mental. It probably is, because I'm, you know, I'm crazy, but... Not yeah, you know, I think this is obviously a real thing, and this man can't play and hasn't been able to play since March, since a nasal fracture, since COVID, and it's obviously dicked him. And who knows? So I just put a fake date on there of the 9th of January. I would have told you it was back on the 20th of October when he was announced as ill in the preseason, but not to be the case. We just don't know. Victor Wimanyama, 
For the San Antonio Spurs, he sprained his ankle on the ball boy. They said it wasn't a serious issue, and they were being precautionary, and if it was a critical game, they would have played. Unfortunately for us, the Spurs won't play a critical game for the next five years. That's not true. They'll be better than they'll be better moving forward, I'm guessing, hopefully. Um, I think that even if Wimby does play, and I do think he will play, that they will do that stupid thing where he comes in. Oh, he's actually on a minutes limit. Like, he missed a game. And that keeps Zach Collins in our mix for now. And we hold. And just when I was... Just, as soon as I said, yep, we dropped Zach Collins. He's got like 18 minutes, 18 minutes, 18 minutes. Wimby got hurt, and Collins has played a big role for in a row of games. That's the only way. But I also did say that the only reason we're going to have Collins is if Wemby Nyama gets hurt, and then he got hurt. So that, to me, still remains the only reason to have Zach. And even if Wemby returns for the next game, hold Zach through that, and then we assess after that. Um, the Sacramento Kings. You will notice also something here, maybe. And again, I know, I know there'll be someone that's going, Josh, I've actually got seven injured guys on my team. I've got nine injured players on my team. There's injuries everywhere across the NBA. There's actually not that many. And I know that, again, I have lived through this for, this is 11 seasons of doing a podcast on this sport and this league. The injuries at the moment are actually well down. There are not anywhere near as many as we have seen in the past. Sometimes you get hit hard with it. You do. I had a roster the other day, the Locked On Fantasy Basketball roster. I had 20 guys on it. Not a single player injured. It happens. They And you can see by these reports, there's one guy, two guys on teams. There are some that have got four or five. But as a general rule, we're, we're pretty... We, Knock on wood, we're going pretty well with injuries. Let's hope it sticks. The Sacramento Kings, Alex Lenz, high ankle sprain, probably gets him back first week of um, January. He would just come in and take, well, maybe he wouldn't actually. He might take the JaVale McGee minutes. He might not. I've seen some of those games that Trey Lyles gets him anyway. It's only probably a 10-minute roll anyway, so it doesn't mean much. Uh, Leaky Monk missed last game with a foot issue. If he is out, we saw Chris Duarte step into that role and not, anything to do with Kevin Herter. Monk is still a 12-team league guy, and none of those other guys are. The um, Who's the next one? It's the Portland Trailblazers. Pretty clean as well. All it is is shade and sharp. They're listing it as groin soreness. I'm listing questionable, but we haven't, uh, haven't had an update from them. He did leave the game with groin soreness, which makes me think that there was a slight strain there, which a one-week groin strain, grade one, or grade one groin, groin strains are normally one to two weeks. So I wouldn't be shocked if Sharp misses the rest of this week. And they have been starting Malcolm Brogdon and playing him the most minutes on the team because why would we use common sense ever in any point in our lives? There's no reason for it. Common sense, it's just, it's, 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 a, um, it's an obtuse theory. Why, why would we use it? Why wouldn't we use the old, injured, no future um, point guard over our number three overall pick and play him over even the more important players in our team? Like, it's what you would do. It's what I would do. So there you go. All that said is while Sharp is out, Brogdon's the guy. It increases the value of Thibel as a streamer and deeper leagues for Kamara. And then when Sharp returns, the, the value of those guys all dips because that is where we're at with that. Today's episode is brought to you by our partners over at eBay Motors. They've teamed up with me, Josh Lloyd, yes, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. So when you're scouting the waiver wire, looking for players to add, we're going to help you get you those guys that are a guaranteed fit on your roster. I'm going to keep harping on about it, but Brandon Pajemski is just really good. He, yes, Draymond Green, we're going to talk Warriors later, might be coming back soon. And maybe that pushes pods to the bench. It shouldn't. He's unbelievably good. And he's a key part of what they do. And even if he moves to the bench, I don't actually care that much. The 27 minutes a night that he can get off the bench, and he should start and play 30, is enough. He contributes in points, rebounds, assists. He gets some steals. He can hit some threes. He can be good with percentages. He's just an all-round fantasy like beast. Don't know. He might be in the future, though. And he's a guy that is still widely available. So you've got to make sure you go and grab him. Because eBay Motors and me know that getting players onto a championship team means finding the perfect fit. And that is the same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. As someone commented on one of these um, ads, I said, I didn't know my car had 122 million parts. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You, you could tell me a car is made up of just one giant part all stuck together, and I, that's all I would know about it. Or you could tell me there's 122 million in there, and that would be, yeah, because I mean, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a real man. I sit at a computer and um, yeah, type stuff on a keyboard with one finger at a time. That's what I do, but eBay Motors knows about guaranteed fits. They know about championship teams, and that's what they bring. 
So they're guaranteed to fit your ride first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to US customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. That brings us into the next team, and this is a team that is playing on Christmas, so apologies if anything happens in the interim to injuries on the Phoenix Suns, but at the moment, we've got Bradley Beal out until around the 9th of January. It has been an absolute disaster season from uh, Bradley Beal this season. If anyone tells you you could have predicted this from Bradley Beal, let me guarantee you they are lying, or ask them for lottery numbers, or ask them to predict every other player's injuries, because again, it is literally impossible. It's literally impossible. It has been a disaster of a draft pick in like round five, round six, wherever you got him. It's still looking that way. But you know what could also happen? Not guaranteeing it. Not even suggesting it's likely. Bradley Beal might have a top 30 run through fantasy playoffs. That is absolutely possible. It's very unlikely, but it's possible. And then we'll look at it and go, well, he dicked me for 10 weeks and then brought me home a championship. While he's out, Grayson Allen and Eric Gordon are the guy. But it continues to just be very, very frustrating for this team, which honestly, at the moment, is quite bad. And it's another example. It's another example of why, in real life and in fantasy, Stars and Scrubs barely works, rarely works. We saw it with the Lakers and the Westbrook Davis LeBron combo, didn't work. We're seeing it right now with this group. Some might say that the Celtics have gone Stars and Scrubs. Well, I don't really think they have because they've got six actual very good players. They haven't gone three with no one else. They've got six top 50 players, six all star caliber players. Maybe you say Horford isn't, but you can say the others are. And that's very different to having three with 10 minimums, which is basically what this Suns roster is. And that's the same in fantasy when you do stars and scrubs in an auction setup. If you lose one of your top guys, well, you're done. You can't really replace it. And that, uh, yeah, that's why I don't like that strategy. Yusuf Nurkic is going to miss Christmas again for a personal reason. We hope he's okay. Drew Eubanks is the guy there. Amazingly, one of the games it was Yudoka as a BUK. Don't think that'll be the case, but who knows? And Damo Lee with his knee, we've got him out until about April, so it doesn't look like he's going to play much part in this season. For the Sixers, Joel Embiid sprained his ankle across the weekend. He's not playing on Christmas. I would suggest I've got him there as a return, twelfth of uh, sorry, twelfth, the twelfth of the twenty seventh. That is the twelfth of whatever month you worry that is. Twenty seventh of December, which is Wednesday against the Magic. I don't believe he plays. He didn't travel with the team to Miami for Christmas. And you would think if he was ready to play on Wednesday, he would have gone down to Florida. Although, although, it is Christmas. Maybe they said, you're not going to play Christmas. Stay home with your family. Meet up with us in um, Orlando. Because I know that that gets mentioned a lot. Well, he didn't join the road trip. He can't join. Isn't a Philadelphia to Orlando like a two-hour flight? Pretty sure he could make make it down there. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure it's like maybe max three hours, yeah? Pretty sure he could join up. Anyway. It appears he might not play on Wednesday, but we don't know. Nick Batum pinged a hammy. They just initially said soreness, which is always what annoys me. Oh, he's got a sore hamstring. Just tell us whether it's a strain. Because if it's a strain, I'm going to rule him out for two plus weeks. You probably won't because you don't know how to deal with it. But if it is actually a strain, it's a two plus weeker, especially for a 38-year-old man. So again, I've got him 12th, 12th of 27th. Cool. These Your backwards dates, the 27th of December for Batum is maybe a return, but I honestly just think he misses the rest of the week, would be my guess. Um, but I, that's without knowing anything. Your Orlando Magic. Uh-huh. Uh, Michael Fultz, again. All they're doing is giving us day-by-day updates, so screw him. He's out until January, is my guess. I've got him there as December 31st. When he comes back, he comes back. The drop of Markel Fultz should have happened months ago. The problem now is if you consider dropping Markel Fultz, it's like, well, you've gone this long. You've waited 10 weeks, eight weeks. And what if he comes back tomorrow? He won't, but what if he does? But also, it's like that situation of like a Ben Simmons or even a Wendell Carter is that if you drop, what are you actually missing out on? Like a top 50 player? Probably not. A best case top 80 guy? And even then, it's going to be slow to return with injury risk, re-injury risk? You should have moved on weeks ago. I say that, having held Mark Fultz in an injured slot, a league where I've got three and I've been able to do it. But you just don't have to. 
Jalen Suggs missed the last couple with a wrist problem that has helped open things up for Cole Anthony and Gaz Harris, who are, you know, Anthony obviously a lot better than Harris. And Jingle and Joe's missed the last couple with an ankle problem too, which has also helped the Harris and the Anthony situation. So all those guys who play like wing forwards, the first, you know, one, two, three positions on the team roster, they would all impact other guys when they come back. Um, someone like an Anthony Black as well, not that we're rostering him anywhere. The Thunder, all it is is Josh Giddy dealing with an ankle problem. He missed the last game. They started Case and Wallace, but neither Case and Wallace nor Lou Dort nor Isaiah Joe are 12 team must grabs. I don't know whether Giddy plays in the next game or not. Usually an ankle sprain is about a week, but it's, it varies. Sometimes it's a game, sometimes there's no games. So I don't know. They've had a little bit of time off here for Giddy to get this right. So I'm just going to label him questionable for now. The Thunder have been much like the Kings last season, remarkably healthy. I believe they're the healthiest team this season. The New York Knicks, obviously, we know Mitchell Robinson's out, but Jericho Sims is also out probably until the beginning of January. We are obviously not rostering, rostering Jericho Sims outside of 20 teamers. They're getting um, Dimitro Skipinsev and Taj Gibson as the backups to Isaiah Hartenstein, who is a very, 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 very clear must roster player. In New Orleans, Larry Nance's rib issue flared back up a few weeks ago. We're looking at him 7th of January. Uh, I, I actually do think that he is washed. Whether that's through a lack of ability or more so the injuries. And the problem is, is Nance is about 30, I believe. And when you are this level of player, a very good player who's a very impactful player, but you are not an elite level all-star guy. Think, like he's better than Rashawn Holmes, but think like a Rashawn Holmes type of player. When you hit this certain age, the decline makes you closer to unplayable. He's not. He's not that bad. But he was a guy that would keep... Valanciunas at 22 minutes a night because he was such an unbelievable fit next to Zion. And the injuries have piled up for Nance, and I just don't think he can do that anymore. So that helps Valanciunas, and it means Nance is not going to have that value. Matty Ryan is dealing with an elbow problem. He's out to the end of January. With Trey Murphy back, he's not going to play a role anyway. And Cody Zeller's missed a couple with an ankle problem. He's only like a 10-minute-a-night player anyway. I wish I had more to tell you about Carl Anthony Towns. He missed the last game with a knee soreness, they called it. And Kyle Anderson started, and that's what I expect happens. I think both Anderson and the Wizard of Noz, Nas Reed, should be rostered. And I would prioritize Reed over Anderson because Reed's got longer value when Towns returns. But I don't know whether Kyle's returning this week. I would expect another game or two off. I would just like to get some actually official update on it versus like, eh, whatever. And low key, they're not the worst, but low key, they're pretty bad at injury reporting. The Wolves. Remember, remember last season, Towns actually complained about them. When they, they said that you know, how he was returning in eight weeks from a calf strain. He goes, eight weeks, bro, this is a three-month injury. What are you doing? They just missed not diagnose it or misreported it. Jalen Clark's got a torn Achilles. We're out until March for him. Um, the Bucks' only injury at the moment is Jay Crowder with a groin issue, probably middle of January. That will have an impact on Portis, on Connaughton, and probably on Leaky Beasley as well um, once he comes back, but he won't be an ad in most spots. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when buying tickets to a big event. Why, why would you? Because Game Time is here to take the fuss out of buying tickets. They've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. We love going to events, sporting events, NFL playoffs, college football, bowl season, um, NBA season, cracking on, NHL's there, minor league sports, whatever they're happening in your area. You can get these tickets. And you just don't have to worry about the hassle. Now, you might have gotten, you might have received money as a Christmas gift. You go, what do I want to do with this? Do I want to go and buy something that's not that's useless? What do I want to experience? And going to an event can be. And that's where game time helps you. You don't have to worry about what the price is because it shows it to you. There's no hidden fees. There's no hidden agenda. There's no transaction fees. There's no processing fees. There's no game time is the best fees. None of that stuff is there. It's all just at the price. 50 bucks means you pay 50 bucks. That is what all in pricing Gives to you over on Game Time. So down, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's power through the rest of these NBA teams now to round out the show. The Miami Heat, Jim Butler out again, third consecutive game out on Christmas with a calf issue. Maybe he's back on the 28th. They've got a few days off before their next game. Um, I haven't seen this, but maybe I'm wrong. There was a lot of people pushing back or shitting on Joel Embiid for missing Christmas. Oh, of course. He always wants to duck the hard opponents. Uh, oh, why would he miss Christmas? This guy's so soft. He only wants to beat up on the bad opponents. Nothing about Jimmy Butler missing though. 
or, or Jimmy Butler, you're never going to play back in Minnesota. And this guy just, I don't know how it happens. I don't know what it is about Jimmy Butler. And partly that's what makes me push back on Jimmy Butler sometimes. It makes me feel like a hater. Is he never cops anything. He cops nothing. He gets like, lion eyes isn't quite the right word, but he's like mythologized. Jimmy Butler d- just carried the heat through the playoffs. Didn't. Played well first round. The rest, mid. Didn't carry him at all. But it's like, oh, look at him. Look at his work ethic. He just instills everything. He's up at 3 a.m. He's doing this. He's the best teammate. Is he, though? Ask all the other teammates that hated him. Some love him. Some didn't. And now this one, like, he's out again with his calf issue. He sat many back-to-backs. I've got no problem with that. I think that's totally good to preserve his body. But he just skates by on everything. Shout out to General Soreness. Hopefully he's okay. But of course, him being out, Josh Richardson being out on Christmas, and Haywood Highsmith with an illness being out on Christmas, means that that rotation is still a complete mess up in the air. Meaning Duncan Robinson, Jaime Huckers, sometimes Kyle Lowry, sometimes not. Sometimes Kevin Love, sometimes not. They all continue to have value. Who knows? Honestly, I couldn't tell you what's going to happen on that team game by game. It's impossible to know. Well, maybe it's not. I just find it impossible to know. For the Memphis Grizzlies, Brandon Clark, he's out until around All-Star break. Derek Rose hamstring, uh, probably first week of January, but at this point, we don't care because the other guys are back. He won't play. The Duck, Luke Kennard, got an update in his knee. He's out at least another week. Will he get a rotation spot back? I guess it would be between him and Zaire Williams, and it's not going to matter for most leagues. Marcus Smart could return next time, which is great. And will he move straight back into starting, or will they keep Vince Williams there? I think the community transport will probably hold on to that role for maybe the first game. They do need Smart to play in the reserve unit. It depends on how Taylor Jenkins likes to do it. And um, if you, uh, just a quick shout out also to, to this guy, Michael Fiddle, who does this uh, betting show over on the um, FBI podcast network, uh, Fiddle Picks. Fiddle's Picks, you've seen him on Twitter. He's got this thing about the Grizzlies where he always talks about it. I've listened to him a few times. He's a good guy. And he's like, the Grizzlies are a great team to bet, like to win the first quarter because Taylor Jenkins runs his starters like basically all 12 minutes. And then the last three, four minutes of every quarter, it's the, their starters versus the opposing bench players. So they get that advantage and they always go hard early and try and get that first quarter win. So he's like, that's his little edge that he likes on, on the Grizzlies for betting them. What that brings me to say is that if you are going to right start Marcus Smart, it'd be very hard to play him all of the first quarter and then have him come in as the backup to start the second quarter. So I don't know how they want to run that, but does Marcus Smart come off the bench? And then he's the guy that sort of comes in maybe towards the end of the first quarter. And then he's that guy that, that runs out in that starter group to take on the opposing bench guys. And then he runs through the start of the second quarter. I don't know. That's just something worth thinking about is that they like to push their starters extra in the first quarter. And if that's the case, it is harder than to sub smart in to be the backup point guard to begin the second if he's played all of the first already. Regardless, you should roster Marcus Smart. No guarantee he's going to be must roster the rest of season. But for now, we do, and we see how it goes. And then Johnny Conchar hurt his thumb last game. Not sure he sticks in the rotation long-term. For the Lakers, this is just going to be imprinted on every one of these slides. LeBron, questionable. Anthony Davis, questionable. Every game, they'll play most of them, unless it's a back-to-back. And then sometimes they'll see it. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. But they're always going to be questionable. Cam Reddish was also questionable for Christmas. He is going to play. Well, Gabe Vincent's going to have the surgery. We talked about this yesterday, saying that once Shams was like, yeah, he's looking towards surgery, and he came back, played 14 minutes, Cody Martin style. He's done. That's all-star break for him, which you would think helps D'Angelo Russell. But Russell played 17 minutes last game without Vincent. So I'm re- I've am i got Russell the industry pickup, which is going to hurt my team because he was playing pretty well. But I'm ready to drop him. Like if we see another stinker from him today, he's out, I reckon. Clippers, Mason Plumley probably back beginning of January. With Daniel Tice playing well, they probably don't need to rush Plumley, And you obviously don't need to rush to pick up Plumley. While Kawhi Leonard has missed the last couple of games, the Clippers only have two games this week. I believe this is their third week of two games this season, which also means that there is a heavy part of a schedule coming up soon. Hmm. Um, I think Kawhi is going to be okay. But again, if he misses this week, it's the best week to miss with only two games. It doesn't cost you that much. With him out, Norman Powell, Amir Coffey, although you don't want to stream Coffee, it is probably just Powell you look at. For the Indiana Pacers, the Shark, Bruce Brown Jr., is dealing with a bone bruise in his knee. He missed the last game. They started Andrew Nempard. I wouldn't rush to add Nempard, even if um, Brown is out. Nempard shot like 80% from the field to give him his line. He is a very, very, very fringe 12-team streamer, and that is it. And Brown is also a 12-team streamer. Get that garbage out of here! Yeah, he just hasn't delivered at all. Um, the Rockets, clean. 
It's Reggie Bullock with an illness. I mean, cool. And Victor Oladipo, who I'm just going to assume is not playing this season. So Bullock's not a part of the rotation anyway. So that one's easy. We got word from Adrian Wojnarowski, the big fella, said that he expects that Draymond's suspension will be between 11 and 13 games in total, which what I, this is what I don't understand about the NBA. You ready for a soliloquy that is off track slightly, but also partially related? I don't get the indefinite suspension, indefinite suspension. I don't get it. I don't understand the point of it. What I would do if I was granted commissioner, it would be yeah, down the bottom of my list of things that I would change. But what I would do, number one, what would I do? Bring back Christmas jerseys. What I would, do, I'd actually, I have, a, I have a massive jersey plan that I that I that I do. I'm not good enough at design to do them, but maybe I'll work on it. Anyway, again, side point on the side point. The easy thing to do with Draymond, right, is you go, okay, so what would what do we actually think is a proper suspension for this incident? To me, it was 20 games. They might think it's 15 games. So you say, you are suspended for 15 games. At 15 games, I need to have seen you do all of these things during the 15 games, counseling, undergo treatment, we need to speak to you, we need to get reports back. And then after 15 games, if all that is passed, you are back in. Not this like, uh, you're suspended for whatever, and then we'll decide whenever, and then come back at some point later. Like, who knows? Give him a set time, but say, in order to be back at that time, you have to have done these things. So we're just saying between 11 and... Th- we still don't even know a bloody number. 11 and 13 games, maybe another five. Or six, that's ridiculous. Set a number, meet it by this point, or else we extend it. And you don't meet it by then, another five. You don't meet it by then, another five. Not this like floating number. Anyway, Draymond looks like he could be back 5th of January. Maybe, according to Wojnarowski. Who knows? Um, do you add green? I wouldn't be rushing in a points league. In a category league, it would depend on my team. I'd be okay with doing it. He's not for everybody, but he is for some. And then, I don't know what's going on with Gary Payton. We heard last week, maybe he's ready to return, but initial reports were a torn calf, which is a three-month injury. And Anthony Slater originally reported that, yeah, like they said he's week-to-week, but this is our long-term thing. And then three weeks later, he's like, oh, ready to go. I don't know what to believe. I don't think he's back this year. I don't think I, I don't, initially didn't think Gary Payton would be back until middle of February, but the reporting's bad. As for Draymond, when he comes back, you know what you need to do with those guys replacing him? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Don't plan what you're going to do with Pajemski, with Kaminga, with Jackson Davis. Roster them all, and we figure it out later. When Draymond comes back, we see. And if they put Jackson Davis out of the rotation, you drop him. If they bench Pajemski and play him 20 minutes a night, you guess what you do? You drop him. But you don't have to make that decision now, because I don't know. Steve Kerr doesn't know. You don't know. So you just don't care about it. Just hold them, enjoy them, caress them softly, and move forward. There are so many people who are like, what do I do when this guy comes back? You don't do anything. You wait, and then we figure it out. Detroit Pistons. Monte Morris, maybe he gets a Pistons debut at the start of January? Is he even a part of the rotation? Do the Pistons know what they're doing? Well, that's a no. We don't know the answer to that one. Um, Jalen Duran could be back next game, which is huge. Will they bring him off the bench behind Isaiah Stewart? Will they start them together again, benching Asar Thompson or Jaden Ivey? I shudder to think, but we'll find out. And Killian Hayes could be back next game as well. Or does he start over Jaden Ivey? And does it give me another reason to rip on Monty Williams? The Nuggets at the moment, they're clean. Although every game you're going to see like Aaron Gordon or Contavious Caldwell Pope pop up with a questionable, or sorry, a probable tag on the injury report. For the Mavs, Kyrie is out. Derek Lively is back. Josh Green is out. Muxy Kleber is out for Christmas. Their next set of games is a back-to-back. Remember, they've got a three and four night, so they have a Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back. I'd be very, very shocked if uh, Kyrie played in those games. I'd be a bit surprised if Josh Green played, and I don't think... Kleber's injury, we just get nothing on. I've got no idea, so I'm just going to rule him out for another week and a half, two weeks. So we keep rolling with Exum, although his decline is going to come even before those guys return because he's not going to shoot this well. Um, we can keep rolling Jones, and then it's just a hodgepodge of like Timmy Hardaway's and maybe Jaden Hardy in very, very deep formats. But there's no real update. I have just that... 28th of December return for Kyrie is me making up a date, trying to read between the lines, which is hard. The Cavs. Garland, we're looking at middle of January. Mobley, we're looking at all-star break for his knee. Don Mitchell, I expect to be back next game. They also had Levert and Merrill miss the last game. Levert's knee soreness is definitely a problem. If he misses the next game and he's in the category league, I'd be like, I'm not actually sure it's worth holding him. He's not playing enough. He gets limited minutes when he comes back from a sore knee. He seems to be in and out in the lineup with a sore knee, and he's had knee problems for years. That's not good enough for me to hold. 
but I'll see what happens for the next one. Merrill, that was a great opportunity for him when Mitchell was out. But if all these guys remain out, Mitchell, Levert, Merrill, then we are obviously just looking at Craig Porter. And then Milk, Ty Jerome, no updates on him either. It's like Muxy Kleber's toe. When's Jerome coming back? I don't know. So I put him towards the um, first week of January, and I'm pretty confident that we don't need to care about that in really any circumstance. The Bulls. Levine with his foot, maybe 10th of January. Does he ever play for this team again? Maybe I should put 15th of January, which is when the Lakers can trade Rui Hachimura. We will find out. The Bulls and Rui Hachimura would just be my perfect melding of... Imagine Rui Hachimura and DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vucevic fighting for shots in the mid-range. God, what, a, what a team. Uh, we'll see what they do. And Giangelo Russell at running point. Oh, my God. Um, Tory Craig's out until around All-Star. And then two of the most NPC... Actually, they're not NPC names because they're actually significantly unique names, but there are guy, names where if you want to play who he play for, I wouldn't even blame Charles Barkley for getting these wrong. I would because it's his job, but I wouldn't blame him because Henri Drell is questionable with a thumb issue, issue and Honorol Batim with a nose fracture. The Bulls actually have these two guys as their, on their roster. No offense to Henri or Honorol, but yeah, they're on a roster. Shout out to Dimitros Kapinsev for his second mention today as well. For the Charlotte Hornets, I think LaMelo Ball returns this week. I've got him there at the 29th of December. I think he could be back earlier. Um, I think he's back this week. Mark Williams with his back. I had a dream. This is how crazy I am. I had a dream that I'd woken up in the middle of the night, checked my phone, and saw Mark Williams um, has now been diagnosed with a fractured vertebrae and he's out for 10 weeks. And I went, oh, would have been nice to know that. And I started like going on a rant in my head while I was sleeping. He's not. I don't know when he's coming back. Rod Boone actually suggested it might be this week, but who knows? So I'm going to list Mark Williams as doubtful for their next game. So we keep going with Big Dick Nick. Terry Rogier had knee soreness. He missed the last game. They started Ish Smith and Nick Smith went off in the second uh, or fourth quarter, actually. So Rogier will be fine, I think. Brandon Miller hurt his ankle, came back into the game, hurt his ankle, left the game. If Miller is actually out for a long period of time, and let's be honest, we have no idea because they won't tell us even if he broke his ankle, we probably wouldn't find out unless someone leaked something. They would tell us nothing. Miller would be droppable. If he misses time, he is droppable. I think he's going to be droppable as soon as Lamelo comes back because he's not even providing top 150 value now. So let's watch that one. And then Frank Nilakina, any updates there? Does his leg exist? Who knows? What we, what we did see was Cody Martin return out of nowhere. The ghost returned. Uh, and that was that. Benny Simmons in the Brooklyn Nets. He is out until middle of January at least. We have dropped him, hopefully, in the middle of November. You moved on. And if you still got him, it's the same story as Marco Fultz. What are you waiting for? We have no confidence in him returning whatsoever. You, you sort of... I know he's very easy to hate. I also sort of feel sorry for him because I do think that there is a... Obviously, he's got uh, mental health concerns, but the back... I just think he's clearly rooted and I don't think he's ever getting back to his best, which is which is sad because his best was actually pretty good. Lolly Walker's hamstring may be back this week, but how clear of a rotation role does he have? Not clear enough for us to care in fantasy for most leagues. For the Celtics, Lamar Stevens was questionable for today. He's out. Mahai Lucas questionable, don't care. Puzingas and Cornette were both probable, so they're going to return, uh, and that's good news. I think that it's still a risk of Cornette's... Not Cornette, who cares? It's for Puzingas sitting some back-to-backs coming up. And then you waited right until the end because I did them in reverse alphabetical order, but Jalen Johnson's back. Go and add him. If he's on your waiver wire, he's got to be added. People still doubt it, right? And maybe that's true. I had someone message me today, and I was like, man, do I, do you actually, should I actually be believing this about Jalen Johnson, if hearing rumors, what about if they get Siakam, what about if this happens, like just add Jalen Johnson, he shouldn't have been dropped, well actually, actually that's not true, you, you could have dropped him without IR given the time frame of the injury, but he should have been added at least two weeks ago, regardless, go and add him now, I think he's going to be fine, and the thing that ties into this is even if you thought that, or maybe they ease him back really slowly and he doesn't get the job back, first of all they were four and ten in the games he missed, though they sucked, he was really good, and now DeAndre Hunter's out, with the knee issue. I feel like this is the second time that DeAndre Hunter's been out with a knee issue where he has a non-surgical procedure. What does that mean? Someone just rubbing the outside of it? I guess it's laser or ultrasound or something. Anyway, he's out for two weeks until the 13th of January. You could obviously jack him. Get that garbage out of here! But what this does do is that we had some fear that when Jalen returned that a depressed penis would drop off. Now, we all have fears about depressed penises falling flat. It's, It's natural. But... With Hunter out, I think it helps Bay keep it up. I also think it helps Bogdan Bogdanovic keep it up because basically you're taking Hunter's minutes and you're transferring them directly onto Jalen Johnson. So if you were happy with Bay, 
you should have been sort of happy with him. If you've been very happy with Bogdanovich, well, you can maintain that level of joy because we just get a straight swap of Johnson in, Hunter out. It also helps Okongwu play some extra minutes too and he'd keep him his 26, 27 minutes a night. So while it's bad news for Hunter, it's good news for everybody else. Muhammad Gay's out until middle of January with a back problem. He was set to be reevaluated about a week ago. They reevaluated. I said, yeah, a month away. Going to be a lost season looks for him. And then Adrian Griffin Jr., personal. He's missed a few games. I don't know what's going on. Hope everything's okay. Um, you would think it's nothing specific to the family because his dad's still coaching. So it's got to be something that's actually personal, personal, not a family issue. And I just hope that yeah, he's okay and everything is going well. But it's also been a pretty lost season for him in year two. Wouldn't give up on him completely, but it hasn't been good. And that is the end of the 30-team injury wrap-up, look around, all of that stuff. Guys, you know what to do. You want to be a double banger? You've got to listen on audio and you've got to watch on YouTube. And when you're here on YouTube, you thumb it up, you subscribe, you comment, you do all of those things. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.